Michele, when you look at the price of oil, I mean, is it impossible to predict right now? We have waivers, we have no waivers, we have the shale oil, we have basically what Saudi wants to do and how much barrels will be taken off the market. I think there's a lot of moving parts, but the key thing to focus on at the moment is that this is very much of a politically driven market. Yeah. As you were saying, OPEC, Iran, politics, China trade. The interesting thing is, I believe the industry is very much building a structurally bullish market for the next decade through a complete lack of investment across particularly the oil mega projects partially led by the low carbon shift, but also by a complete lack of financing for any independent player trying to do mega projects. But Michele, if, uh, you know, going back to the, to the price of oil, that's kind of like more short term mm. imminently. If they take 1 million barrels of oil outside the supply or 1.5, what does that mean for demand? What does it mean for the price? I think there is no doubt that a delta of 1 million barrels per day can clearly get us back up above $70. Demand remains robust, not strong, because the global economy is no longer as strong as it was at the end of last year. But demand remains robust. We see no structural shift in the way the world consumes oil. U.S. is delivering better in terms of volumes, but we still need to see the worst of the bottlenecks in the Permian in the first half of 2019. And we're going to start to see a slowdown in the rest of non-OPEC as well. So I think if OPEC acts together and, um, and takes away barrels from the market, we will go back to above $70, which will be an extraordinarily positive environment for the industry as a whole, where the cost structure has come down to around $50 per barrel. McKelly, what is so important to me is that the experts that I respect say don't panic, and yet we can't find a bid. What will be the catalyst to find a bid? I think the catalyst to find a bid will be to see OPEC agreeing on taking away some of the supply they brought back into the market. Yeah. And also, I think we start to need we need to find some strength in the oil time spreads to start to see that effectively the big inventory buildup that the market is <clears throat> speculating about but hasn't happened yet yeah. doesn't actually come into place. What will the companies do? I mean, our David Fickling had a superb article today, folks. I'll put it out on uh, Twitter. Let's bring up this quote right now, uh, Riley, if we can. David Fickling out of Southeast Asia writing brilliantly on the microeconomics of oil. Consumers and emerging Energy markets are at risk of going on a demand strike. That was with the higher prices recently. U.S. refiners' desperation to get hold of heavier crudes like Mexican Maya is now trading at a premium to light WTI. Don't count out that cheaper pump prices, thanks to the past month's sell off, finally get people driving again. McKenna, that is just an example of these odd microeconomics of oil. How does Exxon or Total react to that? Yeah, Tom, I completely agree with you. It was never the, in, the interest of OPEC to push the oil prices above $80 at the time when a strong dollar and rising rates were putting pressure on the emerging markets economy and were really making affordability difficult. I think now, however, they do have an interest in bringing the oil price back up towards $70 because that is what they need to balance a budget. That is what they need to make sure they don't need to go back into another austerity period, which was very tough on their local populations. Uh, James, do you change your portfolio investments or kind of, you know, where you see value in assets depending on where the price of oil is? Yeah, I mean, from, from a kind of global economy perspective, where the oil price is, is crucially important. If we'd have been looking at $100 a barrel next year, you'd have been clearly shaving a, a chunk off your global growth numbers because it would have been too painful, particularly for emerging markets, given the strength of the dollar. So in some ways, this correction lower in oil prices, to my mind, is actually good news for global growth next year. I completely agree. We're unlikely to stay down here. I think what we've seen is that there's been some supply that's come back into the market, more than people thought. Yeah. Um, but you now have the ability of particularly Saudi Arabia and Russia to, to pull a few barrels from the market and start to stabilise it. I think if we're in a 60-70 range for next year, most people will be quite happy. Um, Mikhail, and going back to your first point about underinvestment, is there, you know, what will convince big oil companies to stop giving back in terms of dividends or, or buying back shares and actually investing? I, 
I think the change towards capital efficiency is here to stay okay. because the financial transmission mechanism between high oil prices and high capex has broken down. And what broke it down is a shift to low carbon. Big oils, I think, are aware that they need to show a strategy consistent with the two degrees of global warming scenario. That means less oil investment, more gas investment, more power investment, more biofuels and petrochemicals. At the same time, the smaller players are finding the banks completely unable to lend them money for hydrocarbon projects because banks have also committed to their shareholders to move away from carbon businesses. And therefore, I think the low carbon shift is creating a very tight physical oil market for years to come and effectively has made a lot of the oil investment financially not demand stranded. Michele, thank you so much. James Barty of Bank of America Merrill Lynch, Michele Della Vigna of Goldman Sachs.